it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. I wanted to jump on before today's video and say thank you so much to everybody who has subscribed, liked, commented. I really appreciate all the support that you guys have given my reasonably new channel. It really does mean the world to me. So thank you so much guys. I hope that you liked today's thrift flips and if there's something that you would like to see in my videos in the future, feel free to leave some suggestions in the comments. I'm definitely open to ideas for projects. So thank you so much for joining me again and I hope that you enjoy today's video. Today we're going to be using the birdsong mold and the laurel mold. We're also going to be using the fleur de lis and harper decor mold and the village market mold and IOD air dry clay. And we're also using the vintage textures stamp. I picked these items up at a thrift store. This jug I thought looked really lovely, didn't really like the colour and these salt and pepper shakers were really cute so I thought that I would have a go at adding some moulds to them. After cleaning the jug I applied two coats of Dixie Belle's Sawmill Gravy using my Dixie Belle Mini. Now chalk paint is pretty good when it comes to adhesion and these are just going to sit on a shelf and look pretty so I wasn't too worried about them getting chipped. I am also doing the same thing to the salt and pepper shakers. These shakers are also going to just sit on a shelf and look pretty because I couldn't get in and wash the inside. Sawmill Gravy is a lovely off-white. I'm excited to be using it today. If you like any of the products that I've used in today's video, make sure you check out the description in this video. I have a full product list there and you can find all of these products on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Next, I'm going to add some cornstarch to my molds and I'm using IOD clay to cast the cute little rooster from the Fleur de Lis mold. Now I'm going to cast two of the rooster because I want to have one on each of the salt and pepper shakers. After removing the rooster from the mold, I am going to use a strong wood glue to apply my rooster to the salt and pepper shaker. You definitely need to be gentle as you're pressing down on your clay because you don't want to damage any of the details. So you can see here that I am working the clay into the moulds and then I'm spinning the mould around and using my thumb to work out any excess clay and then I flip it over and use gravity to help me get it out. I'm now going to cast two of the lovely wheat stalks from the Village Market mould. I'm going to be putting two on each of my shakers. I'm using the same wood glue to glue on my wheat stalks. I'm now using the Harper Decor Mold to cast a letter S and a letter P for my shakers. So I was pretty impatient to get these on and I didn't check that I was putting the letter S on the actual salt shaker. So I do have them around the other way. Now these are just going to sit and look pretty so it doesn't matter in this case. But if you're going to try this, maybe remember to keep an eye on that before you glue them down. Next, I'm going to cast a bird from the birdsong mold that is going to go in the center of the jug. I'm now going to cast the laurels from the laurel mold. These are so gorgeous. They're so versatile. I'm going to cast one of each of those so that they can go around the outside of the bird. So just a tip, you can see that I first roll my clay into a sort of sausage shape and then I work it into the mold. I just find that that works best. 
I'm then going to use that same strong wood glue to glue on my bird and I am using just a rolled up bit of paper towel there to help steady the jug. I'm also adding the same glue to each of the laurel pieces and positioning them around the bird. I decided that I wanted to add some texture to the jug. I wanted to give it some age. So I'm mixing Dixie Belle's Sea Spray with Manatee Gray Chalk Paint. Now, I know some of you might be going, well, why did you paint it in Sawmill Gravy to start off with? Sometimes it's easier if you just paint a neutral color on something when you're not quite sure what you wanna do with it yet. It can really help to have that neutral base to help get your ideas going. So we're using the Manatee Gray with Sea Spray and stippling it onto the jug to create that texture. And then once that's dry, I'm going to go back in with the Sawmill Gravy. So we're still going to get to use that color. So once we come back in later with the sawmill gravy, the manatee grey will still poke through and it will be a lovely effect to have that darker colour that's in the sea spray peeking through a lighter colour. I'm now painting the salt and pepper shakers with Dixie Bell's Cactus Silk Mineral Paint. So again, I started off with sawmill gravy so that I would have that neutral base so that I could get my ideas going. And I decided I wanted to go with this lovely farmhouse looking green. I love this color. So I'm very, very happy to be using it on the salt and pepper shakers. While those are drying, I am using sawmill gravy over the top of our manatee gray sea spray. I'm almost doing a dry brush effect. I'm starting off with very little paint and you'll see that the brush and the paint are catching that texture really beautifully. So I am going to build up the paint to the point where I'm happy with it. I'm not going to be too heavy to start off with. Once my shakers are dry, I am using the Vintage Textures stamp, the Crackle uh, one specifically, and I'm brushing on some Anchor Silk Mineral Paint and adding the Crackle effect to the salt and pepper shakers. Again, I wanna give them a bit of a worn effect. I'm also using the same paint to brush on the letters S and P. Once my paint is dry, I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's White Bestang Wax. Now, in a lot of cases, you would have to put down a base of clear wax first, but Dixie Belle's Silk Mineral Paint has a built-in top coat, so I still have the freedom, you can see there, to wipe back the excess. So I'm using a small brush to work it into the details of the wheat and the rooster. I really want those to fall into the details there. I want the wax and the details, and I am rubbing off any excess. If the white wax wasn't to your taste, you could always do the same process with a dark wax instead to give it a more antiqued brown look. It really is up to your own personal taste. next sealing my jug that we painted in chalk paint this doesn't have a built-in sealer and I want to do some dark wax so we are going to use the clear wax first and I'm applying that with a natural bristle brush 
and then using brown bestang wax over the top now it did go on a little bit heavier than i wanted to start off with so i'm using the clear wax to help tone it back a little bit and also a rag to wipe off the excess but you can see it's really lovely how it's catching the sea spray texture and how it's going into the details of the molds just remember to be a bit gentle this is the next day after the molds were created but they are still going to be a little bit fragile if you're not a fan of an aged finish this would be a step that you would leave out Finally, I'm adding just a hint of gold gilding wax to the details on the bird and the laurel moulds. And here are our finished salt and pepper shakers. I'm really happy with how these turned out. I think they are very, very cute. Let me know what you think of these in the comments. Hit that like button if you like them. Is this something that maybe you would consider giving a go? I love the farmhouse look, but you could really kind of take this in any direction. Our lovely jug turned out well, I think. The texture really gives it a wonderful aged look and it just looks really sweet with flowers in it. If you're not already, I would love it if you could hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our projects. And you can find all of the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.